In this video, we are going to discuss this question. Consider the uniform distribution over the interval a, b and these are the four options that we are given and we have to choose the right one. Now this is a really straightforward question. So we are given that a random variable has a uniform distribution. So let's say that the random variable is x. So we are given that we have a uniform distribution over the interval a, b and we have to say whether the mean of the distribution and the variance of the distribution depend on the length of the interval or not. So if this is the interval over which the random variable is uniformly distributed, then the length of the interval, then the length of the interval is equal to b minus a. Okay. Now there could be two scenarios over here. First scenario is where you know the direct formulas corresponding to the mean of the uniform distribution and the variance of the uniform distribution. And the second scenario is when you do not know these formulas and you have to figure out these formulas in the exam hall. First, let's discuss the scenario in which you know the formulas of the uniform distribution. So if a random variable has a uniform distribution over the interval a comma b, then its mean is equal to a plus b divided by 2 and its variance is equal to b minus a square divided by 12. So if you know these formulas already then the question is really straightforward. All you have to see is whether the mean and the variance depends on the length of the interval or not. Well, as you can see that the length of the interval is b minus a and the mean does not depend on b minus a, but the variance does. Okay, so the right answer is part b, which says that the mean of this distribution does not depend on the length of the interval, but the variance does. So a, c and d are not the right answer. Part b is the right answer. For those of you who are familiar with these formulas and are okay with the derivation of these formulas, you can stop the video over here. But if you feel that you are not comfortable with these formulas or if you feel that you might forget these formulas in the exam hall, then it's a good idea to revise the derivation once. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to derive this formula for expected value of x and variance of x. Okay, so let's take a look at the derivation of these two formulas in case you have to do these in the exam hall. So first of all, let's talk about expected value of x. Now before we could find the expected value of x, we need to write the probability density function. Now if you have a uniform distribution over the interval a comma b, then its probability density function is 1 divided by b minus a for values of x between a and b and 0 otherwise. Okay, so this is the probability density function. Now we are going to use this probability density function to find expected value of x. So according to the formula, expected value of x is going to be integration of x multiplied with f of x dx and it will go from a to b. Now this implies that expected value of x is equal to this integration from a to b x multiplied with 1 divided by b minus a dx. Now note that a comma b is an interval. So a is going to be a constant and b is also going to be a constant. That means 1 divided by b minus a is also going to be a constant. So I can take this 1 divided by b minus a out and I only have to apply integration on x. So this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a integration of x from a to b dx. Now if I integrate this function, I will get that this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a x squared divided by 2. So this is the integration of x and you have a over here and b over here. Solving this further, I get that this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a and this would become b squared minus a squared divided by 2. And we know that b squared minus a squared can be written as b minus a multiplied with b plus a this is divided by 2, this b minus a and b minus a gets cancelled, this imply that your expected value of x is equal to b plus a divided by 2. And this is the formula that I had written over here. So your expected value of x is a plus b divided by 
2, which clearly does not depend on the length of the interval. Now, similarly, let's derive the formula for the variance of x. So for variance of x, we have to write that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. Now see, I already know expected value of x, so I can put that over here. But to find the variance of x, I need to figure out the expected value of x square first. So let's first figure out the expected value of x square. So expected value of x square will be integration of x square multiplied with fx dx and this integration will go from a to b. Now once again the probability density function is 1 divided by b minus a. So this is x square multiplied with 1 divided by b minus a dx and because 1 divided by b minus a is a constant I can take it out and my integration will only be applied on x square. On solving this further, I get that this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a. Integration of x square is x cube divided by 3 and we have a over here and b over here. Once I substitute the values, this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a, b cube minus a cube divided by 3. And now let's try to solve it further. So this is equal to 1 divided by b minus a we can use the direct formula that we have for b cube minus a cube. So the direct formula that we have is b minus a b square plus a b plus a square. This expression is divided by 3 and this b minus a and b minus a gets cancelled. So we are left with expected value of x square is equal to b square plus a b plus a square divided by 3. So this is what we have for expected value of x square. Note that this is just expected value of x square. To find the variance of x, we need to do expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. So let's find the variance of x now. So variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. This implies that variance of x is equal to b square plus ab plus a square divided by 3 minus a plus b divided by 2 which is your expected value of x whole square. Let's solve it further. So this is equal to b square plus ab plus a square divided by 3 minus a plus b whole square divided by 4. If I take the LCM I'll get 12 and this is 4 multiplied with b square plus ab plus a square minus 3 multiplied with a plus b whole square and let me open a plus b whole square it is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab okay let's solve this further so this is equal to 4b square plus 4ab plus 4a square minus 3a square minus 3b square minus 6ab Okay, so this implies that variance of x is equal to 4b square minus 3b square gives us b square. 4a square minus 3a square gives us a square. And 4ab minus 6ab gives us minus 2ab. And this is divided by 12. And now we can clearly see that the numerator is b minus a whole square and the denominator is 12. If you want, you can also write a minus b whole square. It won't make any difference. Okay, so this is your variance of x. So your variance of x is b minus a whole square over 12. This is the derivation of the formula. And clearly the variance of x depends on the length of the interval. So once again, your answer to this question is part which says that the mean of the distribution does not depend on the length of the interval, but the variance of the distribution does depend on the length of the interval.